Good morning. It's a little bit chilly this morning. Quite a bit of dew set in last night, so it'll be a couple hours before we can get rolling with the combines. Haven't uh, uploaded videos for a day or two. We have been flying at it. Like, absolutely flying at it. And we're doing a pretty good job. See, we got these critters coming. I don't know, there's birds up there. So, we uh, went out, we salvaged our peas as much as we could. Got about 15, 1600 bushels of that. Hopefully it makes good seed. Then we, uh, right away we uh, <clears throat> came over and we tried our canola. It was 14, so that's too tough to go on. So we uh, switched the headers over because you need pickups for the canola. We don't straight cut our canola. So we switched the headers back over to barley and we ran north of town. That's whatever it is, 10 miles away or something. We got that one off, shot all the way back, another four miles west of here. And we got that barley yesterday. Today, we, uh, my mom went down and tried the oats just before we shut down for the night last night. They were about 15. So if the sun, which looks like it is gonna come out, it's over there, shining and no clouds. So. Within two, two hours here, it should have the dew burnt off and uh, we should be able to get going on them oats. My uh, wife, when she came in, she said she had a little bit of damage to her straight cut header last night. So we're gonna look at that this morning once I get the dryer fired up and once we have breakfast. If it's uh, if it's a little bit of a job, which it, you know, it could be, then we're just gonna take it off and she can go combine canola while my mom finishes up that 30 acres of oats. If it's not that bad of a job, we'll probably just uh, get her to go up there too. And then they'll, you know, get the oats done twice as fast. And then we'll switch to canola. That is a process of unloading the dryer. Always nicer if you have a west wind, then it blows all the stuff that falls on your head the other way. As I was driving back and forth to the, the field of barley they were on, that was right by our half section of peas. And I was thinking, when uh, my, my grandma said one time, my dad was sitting there talking about guys that worked for him on the rig always going to Vegas and stuff like that and, and how, you know, he would never go to Vegas and gamble and that would be a, you know, a terrible waste of money and, and he just didn't understand how people could, could waste money like that or, and, and gamble. And uh, she told me she like, you know, basically burst out laughing because he was the biggest gambler that she had, she knew at that time because he was a farmer. And I got to thinking, so if it costs us between, you know, 50 and say $80 an acre to seed that, uh, that half section, you know, you're, you're basically between 15, $25,000, you know, and you can go more expensive than that for sure. We try to, uh, we, we try to be a little more thrifty and we, we don't do quite all the recommended stuff that they want you to do for growing peas especially. So, you know, I, I guess she was right. All farmers are, I mean, would you, you know, the fact that we don't, uh, the fact that we don't carry insurance makes it even more of a risk. So, you know, would you, would you call that, would you call that a roll of the dice to spend $30,000 in hopes of getting something in the, in the fall? Because, you know, basically that's what it would cost. So yeah, I guess would you consider that a gamble? And I would say a hundred dollars would be conservative for putting in a crop. Most guys probably are more than that, a hundred dollars an acre. So on our farm, we farm basically 24, 2,500 acres of our own land. And then we pick up some rented stuff. You know, kind of as it comes available, we don't really go looking for rented land, but you know, some years a guy will phone and say, you know, I don't want to, you want to rent this quarter or that quarter and uh if if we had a good year or we're feeling energetic we'll take it on 
otherwise you know 2500 acres is, is is enough for us and our machinery and the, the manpower we have because we are a family farm we don't have any employees so we do all the work ourselves but back to the the cost per acre you know i would say conservatively you could say it, it costs on average a hundred dollars an acre to seed a crop so that's basically for us two hundred and fifty thousand dollars right off the bat in may june and you're only hoping to get that back now that half section of peas out there like i say that generated 1500 bushels of seed if we were to sell that that'd be worth fifteen thousand dollars so we got a long way to climb back to get to the 250 that it cost to put the crop in plus we want to make 250 so we can put the crop in next year and then we need to make the rest to pay for whatever land payments machinery payments maintenance upgrades and then it doesn't hurt because this is uh, what we do for a living it doesn't really hurt if a guy can pull out a few thousand dollars for his own living expenses okay so when my wife came back yesterday from out uh, doing the barley she uh, she had picked up a rock and got stuck in her header but uh, that was rough stuff anyways they had to cut fairly low so she had a couple of these feeder chain bars that were bent this one so we uh, we just had it in front of the shop and we uh, straightened those out so if uh, we just got to looking at her header and it's damaged enough that there's no point in uh, no point in her going out with it to do that little bit of oats so the rock had got stuck under here and it bent this uh, drum pretty good all the way around so definitely can be fixed but uh, as you can see it's going to take It's going to take a bit for sure. So with that looking the way it does and uh, the fact that mom's only got whatever 25 probably acres of oats to do now, Corey's going to take the Kenworth and her combine. She's going to go out to that north field and start taking off that canola. I don't expect she'll get more than uh, 20 bushels an acre. That's only about 100 and 110 acres. So if it runs 30, she'll need the Kenworth and a, and a truck. By then, mom should be done the oats anyways. We'll switch her header over and she can go out and finish the canola with Corey. So I'm just gonna set this combine. First, you gotta uh, put the rotor into low speed. So you push this lever in, there's a one and a two. Then you gotta adjust the stems because she was doing barley. Gives you a readout here. We're going to canola, so should be at three and twelve. And right now we're at what? We're at nine, I guess. And and uh, that says twelve. I I find their settings hard to believe because what you want. Turn the light on here. What you want is it just big enough for. Uh, you know the canola to fall through and not a lot of chaff so there's this is a top set and there's a set underneath of this so all the canola and some of the pods and stuff are going to fall through the first set the top set and all the stalks and everything else are going to go out the back then through the bottom set the rest of the pod should go over and the uh or what has to happen here yeah, whatever pods go over will get carried back up and go back through the rotor and get thrashed again. Which, I mean, canola, you shouldn't really, there shouldn't be a lot of returns. And then the you know, seeds fall through there and go into the tank. So I'm going to turn these down a little bit. I'll just uh, set them to a little bit below what it says on the chart here. And then we'll make some more adjustments when we get into the field. All right, so me and Buddy, we're taking Carl out to uh, Corey. She's combining the canola. I guess she's almost full, which is nice. So we are still plugging away. My mom is almost on the oats. That was actually running pretty good. 
always goes way faster with two combines. Like you would think it would go twice as fast, but it seems like it goes like five times faster if you have two combines out there. So she uh, probably only has a truck and a half left. I'm just topping off the dryer. You gotta run this auger really slow because it evens out on both sides as you're filling and I'm only filling on one side. So, so we got dad over here. Uh, the wife had a broken knife right here. So he's got it in front of the shop because this is the one with the uh, severely damaged drum there. But it's good job for him. I've said before, he has the patience, although he was doing a little cursing out here, so I don't, uh, this might be getting the best of him too, which is kind of funny. Good evening. So they finished that canola piece up north or a little ways. Didn't run very good either. Maybe average 20. So the stuff here tomorrow is going to have to make up for it. I'm just testing my oats here out of the dryer. This is the last load of oats and then that's it for oats for the year. As soon as I go get this unloaded into the bin and get the corners cleaned out of that truck, I'm going in. I haven't had lunch today. We haven't had supper yet either. It's what, eight, quarter after eight. So it is time to go eat. They are gonna do a moisture check on their canola when they get down here and then see if they, uh, it's not supposed to rain tonight or tomorrow, so they'll probably just shut down. This stuff is easier to tackle in the daytime, so. That'll probably be it for us for the evening. So to all of you who watch, thank you very much. And we'll see you all tomorrow.